Welcome to the Silverthorn Pulse. I'm Kim Jardim and I'm here with Town Manager Ryan Highland and we're going to provide a recap of the July 26th, 2023 work session and council meeting. So Ryan, let's jump in with work session first. Uh, we had updates to the short-term rental regulations and housing nexus study. Um, as we all know, this is an evolving process with short-term mm -hmm. rentals. So as we move through uh, these months and years, uh, things might change with short-term rentals. Yeah, that's right. And uh, this was a kind of a part two of a conversation that we had had at a prior work session and um, was an opportunity to present the council with some draft language for ordinances uh, that we could bring back for formal approval later. So um, as we had talked about last time, a couple of the significant concepts, I guess, are um, the caps, uh, which were implemented about a year ago uh, in the 10 percent zone um, i think it, we are maybe 48 licenses left and so as you get closer to um, you know potentially in the next year or two hitting that cap you're going to need a wait list so going through uh, how we would regulate the wait list and how that would work another thing that was discussed um, was we have a process for formal complaints and if you get uh, three complaints uh, that are formalized, then you could lose that license. So that was in place, but um, we had some concerns from residents who live next to some STRs that um, the complaint would be resolved, but it, it kept recurring. And so um, we're proposing, and, and council was receptive to a process where even if a complaint is resolved, if it keeps recurring uh, three times, that could then turn into a formal complaint, and again, three formal complaints, and then you would potentially lose your, your license. So um, that's some adjustments to the complaint side of things. Also conversation, again, to be continued, but um, use it or lose it, I guess, is one of the uh, phrases that would accompany a policy where if you don't use your license a certain number of days per year, then um, you would not be eligible to renew that. So some conversation there, more to come. I think there were conversations about what's the appropriate uh, number of uses to require. Um, no certainty to that, we'll, we'll revisit that again. So more work session work to do on short-term rentals, and then moving forward, those would end up in the regular meeting uh, with ordinance changes, which uh, public has an opportunity to uh, weigh in on those at, at the regular meeting. So that was the um, update on some language that had been drafted. We also talked about uh, housing nexus study. Council directed us at the prior work session to um, see if we could engage a consultant to do a nexus study. And uh, we're working with a consultant to see if we can get that accomplished in the next couple of months. So the foundation there is um, there is a direct nexus between short-term rentals and uh, workforce housing needs in the community and the impacts that are there. And so a nexus study would tell you uh, what those impacts are uh, within Silverthorne specifically. And then as other communities have done, uh, you would assess a fee uh, against short-term rentals, which could go directly to fund uh, workforce housing. So more to come there, but that, um, that was the short-term rental conversations of the work session. Um, moving on to the sustainability update, we have a new sustainability coordinator, uh, Christy Diagati, and I imagine uh, this update was about some of the initiatives that are gonna be taken in the realm of sustainability. Yeah, uh, Christy is, um, still kind of has one foot in the planning position that she previously held because we haven't hired uh, into that position so but uh, about half of her time is uh, she's been able to spend on sustainability and so council had met her before but this was an opportunity to get a little more uh, insight into the work that she's doing I think uh, to start she's really just trying to get her hands around uh, what we have done in Silverthorne and what the opportunities are and talking to council about what kind of comes first. I know she's got a meeting with HC3 coming up and you know there's an interest in figuring out how Silverthorne fits into some of the programs that HC3 uh, manages. So more to come there, but just kind of an initial touch point with the council to uh, introduce the work that she has started and hopefully soon will be 100% um, 
of her time when we can get some more planning staff hired. So I look forward to that. Yeah. It's definitely an important initiative. Yeah. So uh, moving on to parking management update, um, we, we receive plenty of inquiries at Town Hall all the time about parking within the town of Silverthorne mm -hmm. from both residents and guests alike. And businesses. And businesses. Yeah. So, so this was just a, a, a placeholder um, to let the council know that, you know, we really, um, from staff's perspective, would like to talk about this holistically. And it is really parking management is the term. And as far as the bandwidth that we have, uh, on staff and in the police department, we just cannot tackle all of the different pieces that are out there. And so I think it might be a council retreat topic later in the fall, um, but uh, someone would like 30 minute parking here and we, you know all of these various requests, which uh, we've got to look at the whole system. Uh, and so maybe a council retreat topic. Great. So we are in search of a new police chief we are down to, I believe, four candidates for that position. That's and right. that'll be coming up in early August that the interviews will occur. Yeah, um, for the public uh, who are interested in that process, uh, we kind of have a uh, two-day um, process going on on August 10th in the evening, uh, starting at 5.30 until 7 at the pavilion. Uh, there'll be a meet and greet. And so any community members uh, who would like to meet the candidates and provide their feedback uh, to staff on, you know, how, how they felt about those candidates. Uh, August 10th, 530, the pavilion is an opportunity. Then on the 11th, uh, that's when we get into the formal interviews, uh, a couple of different panels that they'll be working through. So um, really the same process that we used uh, when we hired Chief Miner uh, a number of years ago. So we're mm -hmm. replicating that and opportunity for some public involvement there. Great. Moving into the council meeting, we swore in our new council member, Jonna Glassman. So that was uh, yeah. exciting. We have a new council member. She replaced Chris Karen. Um, mm -hmm. Chris had to move outside of town limits. Yeah. So had to step down and resign from her position. Yeah, it was Jonna's first night. Um, did have an opportunity uh, with some other staff to tour her around and throw a ridiculous amount of information at her. Um, and this was her first meeting. So very excited to have a full complement of seven members on the council again and uh, her first meeting. Great. Under the consent calendar, uh, there was a resolution supporting the grant application with DOLA, the Department of Local Affairs. Um, that is for an ADA ramp at the Pavilion Bridge. Yeah, we have, uh, for folks that are familiar with the, the pavilion right at the end of the bridge, there's a staircase and then there is a kind of gravelly, not so great uh, access. Uh, we do have ADA access to the trail up at the bridge that's at Chipotle. Um, but we really need it at the, at the pavilion as well. So looking for a grant to help us do that. We've got a design uh, that has a kind of a very long kind of switchback uh, run to get down to that bridge and would love to get some grants to help build that. So fingers Fantastic. crossed. Great. Uh, in terms of public hearings, there's a resolution approving a minor subdivision and final site plan for Azure Landing. So that's on formerly Parkway Place South. Yeah, and, and essentially uh, the lot that is vacant just to the north of the Eclectic Restaurant, uh, if you're looking for a landmark. Uh, mixed use project, very similar to the other things that we're seeing in downtown, uh, commercial on the ground floor, residential above. Uh, council felt like it was a, a well-designed, uh, good-looking project, and that uh, was approved. Excellent. There were two ordinances regarding uh, properties that the town is purchasing. We talked about these last time. This yeah. is just second reading. Second reading, so same story, but just briefly uh, purchasing uh, homes so that we can uh, house some of our employees and then also uh, opportunity to sell some properties with deed restrictions so that they are uh, only available for workforce to purchase moving forward. So um, second readings approved. Great. Under action items, we saw a resolution uh, regarding an IGA, which is an intergovernmental agreement uh, for the 911 communication center. Yeah, a lot of work going on, really good work at the um, 911 comm center. Uh, that is a um, 
organization that is collectively managed and funded by all of the municipalities, uh, our fire districts in the county. And when we had a vacancy uh, come up in the executive director spot there at the end of last year, really presented an opportunity to uh, just have an assessment of the whole center. It's been challenging uh, to hold on to directors and to staff. And so a lot of work just assessing what we need to do moving forward. We need uh, higher levels of staffing. We're all going to have to fund that at a higher level. But in that intergovernmental agreement, one of the things uh, that was important was really the, the governance of that operation. And uh, town managers, county manager had previously been kind of a policy board. Uh, and then we had an operations board and it just, it just was kind of clunky and didn't function that well. So putting our law enforcement and uh, fire and EMS uh, really more closely aligned with the day-to-day -day operations and the, uh, they're the ones that are you know most connected. So that was the biggest change uh, in that IGA. Uh, it was also uh, just a really old IGA and just needed some tuning up. So uh, thank you to uh, all of our dispatchers uh, who've been doing a great job as we've been going through this assessment and uh, we're actually speaking in interviews, uh, going to be interviewing uh, for the executive director for the comm center uh, later this week. So stay tuned there. Fantastic. And then council moved into executive session. Can you tell us a little bit about what was discussed in there? Yeah, um, I can give you the, the topics and I think uh, these will be in the, the light of day soon. So we talked about the potential acquisition of a property in the Gateway District. Um, we've talked previously about uh, the town's purchase of Arby's for transportation uh, needs moving forward and also an opportunity to house a nonprofit in the interim. Uh, we are uh, working on acquisition of the Burger King as well, uh, again, for transportation planning. And so um, that's what that was about. Uh, it's not a done deal, but uh, we're hopeful that we uh, can bring that one to fruition. Also, the Fourth North Redevelopment Project. Yeah, talked about uh, a number of things there. I think most importantly, there is a workforce housing component to Fourth North. So I'll use Eclectic as a landmark again. Uh, just directly to the west of Eclectic, there's a lot there that as part of this redevelopment is planned for workforce housing. Uh, unfortunately, the economics right now uh, are not allowing financing to this to have that move forward. And so talking to the council and the developer about you know, how could we potentially um, reconfigure that, that deal and that development so that we can get it out of the ground. So more to come there, but I think everybody, uh, developer, town, uh, I think we're reaching out to the county as well, trying to figure out how we can bring that project to fruition. So just conversations about that. Great. And then there was discussion related to the new child care center. Yeah, we've got a great partnership project with the county. Uh, we're getting closer to a ribbon cutting and an opening uh, of that center. And we just have a, um, a gap on that project and uh, had a conversation with council. And so we are going to split that with the county. We're at a, the final gap we need to close is $420,000. And so splitting that uh, with the county and gets that project uh, over the finish line. And so uh, a great project, a great partnership. Um, and like I said, we're looking forward to uh, a ribbon cutting pretty soon. Absolutely. End of August, I believe. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks everybody for being here with us today. We will see you back here in August.